Hi, this is Marcy Ann, the Recreation Director for Spinnaker Resorts and Low Country Master Naturalist, getting ready to talk about sea turtles. Now, when you come out to our beaches, in the morning is generally when you're going to see these sea turtle tracks. And I bet, I think it's easiest to describe them as it looks like somebody has brought a cart up on the beach or maybe ridden a tractor. Um, they're pretty big tracks and they're about two, two feet apart. And you'll see they kind of look like V formations in kind of a row. And you'll see them coming up from the water's edge all the way up into our soft sand dunes. Now, it's a lot easier to see them if you're, if we do our turtle patrols, what we usually do is we walk around along the rack line and we look up into the soft sand area for those tracks. And when we see that wonderful tractor looking um, tracks coming up onto the beach, we start kind of looking around for what we say is the body pit, which is kind of a little depression that you'll see in the sand. And that means that we've got a nest there. One thing to keep in mind when you come out onto our beaches, this morning we came out at 6 a.m. to do our turtle patrol and um, to set this up and we noticed that there's a lot of trash on our beaches this morning. Um, so make sure you just go by the rule that what you bring out with you, you take back at the end of your day. Um, because it's really important for our sea turtles that they not come into contact with any obstructions when they're coming on the beach. And that includes um, making little shelters or art pieces out on the sand, um, sand castles, um, burying your little brother and leaving that open gaping wound in the sand. Um, we want to make sure we take care of all of that stuff before we head back um, to our units at the end of the day because we sure don't want to have these mothers not decide not to either nest or to get stuck in some of this stuff that comes out here or ingesting any of these plastics we're seeing out here. That's really important. So let's all do our part and make sure that what comes out with us goes right back and we leave nothing but footprints behind. When you come onto Hilton Head Island, one of the things you'll see is all of our signs that say lights out um, for the sea turtles. And the reason why we have the lights out is because during the early part of the season, the mother sea turtles, they get scared off by lights. Um, so they will come along the, the kind of eyeball along the beaches here and look for a good spot to nest. And if they see light there, that will keep them com from coming up and nesting. Um, and we don't want that to happen. So. When you're coming out onto the beach, um, a lot of people like to do night walks um, on the beaches, which is great, but make sure that you always use a red light or a red filter um, flashlight if you're going to use that, or even better, just use the moonlight. Your eyes will adjust and you'll be amazed at how much this beach will open up for you um, as you're kind of walking out here. Now, the other thing that a lot of people don't think about is their cell phones. They get out here on the beach and they you know, want to check and see what time it is. And so the first thing that happens is that glaring light from your, your cell phone. Um, if you come into our recreation department, we actually have instructions of how to change a filter on your cell phone. They're already programmed that way that will give you that red hue because um, sea turtles can't, their eyes can't process red light so they won't see it. We get asked quite often about our sea turtles and how they happen to decide to nest here on Hilton Head Island or the uh, Beaufort County beaches. and. There is a theory that generally the sea turtles will come back to the same beach um, year after year and that they've been here for generations, that you know this is the beach that they were born on. And yes, that is true to a point. Um, turtles kind of, they when they hatch, the reason why we don't want to help sea turtles after they hatch to get into the water, sea turtles get a vibe, kind of an imprintation of where they are hat hatching at and they'll kind of use the Earth's magnetic field um, to kind of zero in on this location. Now it's not a perfect process because they will, if they were born on Hilton Head Island, they could also nest in the neighboring islands. So we may see the same turtle that had nested here on Hilton Head Island. They may go up to like Hunting Island or Edisto Beach. So because they are constantly swimming out in our waters, they may hit a couple of different beaches on the same mother sea turtle. But they'll still stay within the same region. When we get asked what kind of sea turtles we have here on Hilton Head Island, we primarily have loggerhead sea turtles. There are various different types of sea turtles that live in the ocean, but primarily we have loggerheads, which happen to be the South Carolina state reptile. So that's kind of cool. Um, loggerhead sea turtles, generally last year we had about 463 uh, 
sea turtle nests here on Hilton Head Island, but we actually got kind of a special treat because we got three varieties of sea turtles, primarily loggerheads, but we also had two green sea turtle nests, which actually is, I am very partial to green sea turtles. They are my personal favorite because they look like they have eyebrows. Um, they have a lot of personality to them. And they're a little bit smaller than the loggerhead sea turtles. Loggerheads are about three to four feet in length and about 350 pounds. And um, greens are slightly smaller than that. And we also had a really amazing treat last year. We had a Kemp's Ridley, which Kemp's Ridleys are even smaller than loggerheads and greens, um, but they're extremely rare. Actually, we all know that um, cedar turtles are an endangered um, creature on this planet and Kemp's Ridley are extremely um, volatile. So the fact that we had a nest here on Hilton Head Island was just amazing. That was an amazing treat that we had. So let's talk about when our sea turtles actually come out to make a nest here on Hilton Head Island. Um, first thing is if you see a tur sea turtle coming up on our beaches, please stay far away. Um, I can understand we all want to kind of see this amazing process, but make sure that you're staying about at least 20 feet away from them, even further if you can. Um, because we certainly don't want to interrupt these mamas while they're laying their eggs. And when you see the emergence, you know, that's 350 pounds that they're pulling up onto these beaches, and it's kind of a slow process. Um, it can take a couple of hours for the sea turtle mama to actually go through the whole process of laying her eggs. So she will emerge from the water and dig a body pit. And these body pits can be about four or six feet wide. Um, and she'll kind of move around to find the right place. She's looking for a softer sand area to really dig down. And it's pretty amazing when you get a chance to see what these egg chambers really entail after seeing these huge sea turtles and what the chamber looks like. Um, the egg chambers kind of look like an upside down um, uh, light bulb. So they're kind of that conical in shape. They're deeper at the base and they're narrower at the top. And so she's reaching down with her flippers and making these deep chambers. And they're about 21 inches deep, um, which is always surprising. Every time we have to probe a nest, I'm always shocked at how deep she can get. And these nice, beautiful, smooth walls. So what we see is this big turtle laying in, on the sand and first we'll see some sand flying way up in the air as she's kind of digging her nest area out. And then she will go into a trance. And she'll sit there in that trance for about 20 minutes to almost an hour, um, depending on how many eggs she's gonna be laying in this chamber. Um, I've, we've opened up the chamber um, to, to move some eggs and we've gone from anywhere from about 50 eggs that's late in the season they'll lay fewer eggs and early in the season we've moved um, nests that have like 122 eggs the average is about 110 eggs um, per per nest so you'll see them laying they look like little ping pong balls they're laying in the bottom of this um, little chamber out here on the beach when she's done she'll pack the sand up on top and all you're going to see is this divot um, of just kind of thrown sand. Now, when you see that we have a sea turtle nest, how you're gonna know that, that we have them here on the beach is you're going to see these um, little marked off areas of orange tape. So you're gonna see some spikes in the sand and you'll see this orange tape marking it. And so let me explain to you when you go up to these nests, um, first of all, don't walk on them, you can, but you can still go up and look at them. And what you're going to find is on the right, I'm sorry, the left-hand corner of the spike, you'll see some numbers. And you're gonna see, it's gonna say in C2, which means that that nest was the original nest. Um, the mother came up from the water and she laid her eggs in that exact spot. Or you're going to see that there is a number on there. Now, if you see a number that's on that, on that spike, that is how many eggs are in that nest. And the reason why they know how many eggs are in that nest is because sometimes we have to move the nest. About, I, last year I think the statistic was that we had to move about 60% of them. And that's because of beach erosion, which is a whole other video and we'll do that another day. Um, but 
the reason why we would have to move the nest is because we run the uh, problem of possibly having on these king tides that we get here, having them flooded and the water washing up on them. So we have to put the move the nest into a safer area. So what we will do is we will dig another hole, just like the mother sea turtle had done. And um, we always make sure that we dig it the same depth of the original nest. So we start out by taking the eggs out of each one and we'll put them in a bucket. And we'll even take some of the sand from the original nest and put that in there because it's kind of got some of the, the nutrients from the um, mother when she birthed all of them. So we're going to put all of that sand in, we're gonna put the eggs in the bucket and we're gonna dig the exact same depth of hole. So we'll measure that hole, measure the new hole, make sure that they're going to the same depth, move them up onto a, a better area higher up on the beach area and then we're going to replace all of those eggs. Now, generally the rule of thumb is because our sea turtle volunteers are out here from 6 a.m., um, we need to have those eggs moved by 9 a.m. So we've got a, like a three hour window there um, because the yolks will kind of like the placenta, they'll hook onto that egg and we don't want to risk ripping that um, within the egg. So we're very careful when we remove them out that we don't torque the egg at all and that we're placing them straight back into their new nest. Um, so then when we're done, we know exactly how many eggs we have because we counted them on the way out. We counted them all back on the way back in. And we mark that on that spike to tell everybody um, how many eggs we're going to be looking for when that nest hatches. Now sometimes when you come and look at our uh, sea turtle nest that we have here in the low country, you'll see that some look different from others. Some have a big cage around them. Now when I do the patrols on Hunting Island, we generally use the big cages because we have a huge issue with raccoons. Um, raccoons will come in and they love sea turtle eggs. So that's one of the number one ways that we lose our nests. We call that a, a predated um, nest when the raccoons get there before us volunteers do and they'll eat all the eggs. So you'll see a cage over it. Now, generally here on Hilton Head Island, you're not going to see the bigger cages because they don't have as big of an issue with the raccoons. You're going to see a screen that's over the nest. And it's kind of a, a almost more like a um, latticed screen, not like a window screen. It's a latticed screen. So that way that when that nest hatches, those babies can still make it back out of that nest, even if that screen is still there. And that screen is there to kind of keep out the other critters that want to go after those um, eggs. And that would be our ghost crabs, which ghost crabs, I used to really like ghost crabs. They were really cool. And now that I've worked with the sea turtles, I don't like ghost crabs so much, but they're still pretty, it's not their fault. They're hungry. I get it. They like a snack, but I really don't like it when they get into our, our sea turtle nests and they get in there quite a bit. They're a problem. We hope you enjoyed this video on our local sea turtles here on Hilton Head Island. It was a lot of fun to put together for you. Stay tuned, we'll be doing a follow up on this once the turtles start hatching out of those nests. So we'll be happy to bring that to you and explain a little bit of that process as well.